سلام به قسمت چهارم فصل دوم دنیای فرانچایز ها خوش اومدید ازتون دعوت میکنم آخرین قسمت از صحبت های من رو با فرانچایزی های کامفورت کیپرز با هم ببینید As far as finding the customers, mm -hmm. uh, how does I, I understood that the name of the comfort keepers give uh, some kind of you know reliability to the customers? <coughs> and but other than that, uh, do they help you uh, as far as providing the website or referral or introducing to any organization? How how do you get support in that aspect? As far as um, Getting customers, um, like you said, the franchise also um, has contracts with different health organizations, uh, different referral agencies as, as well at the corporate level. Uh -huh. So they trickle down to us. Um, you get calls that come into your office. I've, it's a long-term care company and you know um, we're a We're a trusted advisor, we're a vendor with Comfort Keepers, and I have a client that I'd like to um, okay. have you talk with and um, you know take care of. So there's many um, vendors uh, that corporate has on board uh, for us as well. And also what Chris had mentioned earlier about um, the corporate gets calls in from all across the United States and those are vetted out to the areas where um, you're, you're closest to. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, um, with that as well, they're giving you um, business plans, training on how to grow your business in your own area as, as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. With a, one of the fundamental uh, uh, things that they offer to you as, a, uh, as part of bringing you on board is, uh, there's a comprehensive sales manual all you know to help you understand as you're going to have to market your business it's not going to just come to you you're going to have to sell someone in your organization is going to have to sell uh, both and and by that you have to develop uh, relationships with people who will be referral sources for you hospitals doctors trusted financial advisors lawyers all those people in the business community who can who have uh, relationships with seniors and the families of seniors who when they become aware that there's a need in that home they can say oh well you should talk to comfort keepers um, so you have to be in front of those people and have in some way so that you're developing that local sales effort uh, because you have to sell <clears throat> in in both that way locally business to business you have to sell directly to the consumer and you have to sell on the internet and then also uh, work with facilities because Uh, facilities can be very important to us. Hospitals, nursing homes, assisted living facilities, uh, where we can be in an assisted living facility providing one-on-one -on -one care to one of their, their residents uh, to help augment uh, what's going on in their lives so that, uh, that they can be comfortable, uh, more comfortable in an assisted living environment, even if it's not at home. We prefer to do it at home, but we work at, at all levels. Uh, In some cases, we're actually working in hospitals where we have caregivers who are placed in hospitals as patient sitters. But the point being, you have to market at all of those levels up and down. Mm -hmm. And CKFI has uh, helps us with uh, understanding what needs to be done at each of those levels. We have sales manuals, detailed information on every different type of occupation we might want to approach. And how do you approach them? What is in it for them to, to try to use our services or recommend our service to one of their Uh, clients. I mean, why, why would a doctor want to tell a family that they ought to be using comfort keepers? Mm -hmm. um, and we can help help meet with them, explain to that person why they should uh, should talk to their customer about about using us. Uh, 
Uh, one of the specifications of working with a big franchise system is this kind of you have to follow everything that you say. Some of the people <coughs> are not you know, comfortable with that. They want to do whatever they <coughs> think or, you know, they want to be some kind of flexible. Mm -hmm. How does that work in comfort keeper system? Is there anything, for example, let's say that you come with a great idea that you can do something different than what they mm -hmm. say. H how do they do in these uh, occasions? How do they help you or uh, are you, you know, you have to exactly do the day one, they don't hear that. Has it happened to you ever? <laughs> yeah, within, within corporate, you know, you do get a, a boilerplate. Each of our offices are independently owned and operated. If you go to any other office and another comfort keeper's office, you're going to get a different um, feel. You're going to get a different little flavor. Um, but the the top layer is that excellence is, you know, is there at the, at the top layer. Comfort Keepers, the franchise gives us um, options as, as far as you know, different vendors to use. You can, you, you know, these are just a boilerplate, but these are ideas and your, and your own ideas um, you can implement in your office. Mm -hmm. um, if there's a vendor that you might have found that, was, that you thought was really um, good and successful and you want to share that you know to the other offices that's how things get started that's how we get those uh, vetted vendors at the corporate at the corporate letter um, level and it comes from the top down as well and it comes from the bottom up as as well so within comfort keepers there are options there are choices but there are standards as well that you do have to you do have to meet because we are re we are um, recognizing the brand and we're a member of that brand. So there's, there are certain standards that definitely have, you know, have to be um, met. But there's choices that we're given and that's, and that's good. Everyone needs choices. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> Karen stressed and, and it's stressed to us at all the time that each office is independently owned and operated. We're independent business people, but we're part of a brand. And in order for that brand to be meaningful, there have to be standards across the brand and certain aspects of how you as a customer encounter us have to be the same across the board. And that's something that uh, we all work on. We all realize the importance of and uh, um, we're working harder and harder all the time to make to enhance the level of consistency across the board. But as in, you know, I, I'm free to do a lot of things the way I choose to do them in a lot of respects, as long as I adhere to the basic standards of what somebody's going to encounter when they come, uh, come to Comfort Keepers. Uh, let us talk about the most important challenges that you have in this business. Mm -hmm. And how do you face them? Yeah, for me, the most important challenges are, um, I have a, I personally have a high standard and uh, is, per, is providing the caregivers, the comfort keepers in the home. Because there are many seniors out there and just retaining and finding uh, good caregivers is probably our, our biggest challenge. And just industry-wide, industry -wide, this is actually you know, a challenge um, all across the board is finding uh, caregivers mm -hmm. um, to work. Even uh, for your business that you don't have medical services, you still have that challenge? Mm -hmm. Yes, we still have that challenge is hiring awesome, great people on board to come into your home. And What are the specifications of those people that you are always looking for? Well, we definitely have a, have a process and which comfort keepers, uh, the corporate offices, have you know suggested and it's up to us if we'd like to use them and one is we actually um, provide an assessment for anyone that wants to work for us and we want to make sure they meet our criteria mm -hmm. and one of them is having compassion because we can teach the skills we can teach you how to transfer someone we can teach you how to uh, bathe someone but we can't teach you how to have compassion. That's just, that is a characteristic that's inherent. We need someone that has integrity, who's trustful, has compassion, and those are the people 
that that we look for not to say exactly yeah those are the people that we will look for so on top of that you know we can provide the training so we can make we can have great awesome people caring for our um, caring for our clients so you know there's a criteria there's there's a lot of people who would like who would like to work for us there's a ton of caregivers out there but it's we're we're taking the cream of the crop yeah. mm-hmm. so that's why that's why we say there's a shortage we 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 require a personality assessment uh, you know a test that you take so that we have some idea uh, and we believe there's validity in that test that tells us a good bit about your potential to be a successful caregiver uh, the people who do our hiring and do our interviewing have a lot of experience. They've, we, we interview a lot of people. We don't hire a lot of them. Uh, so we have a lot of experience in, in doing one-on-one interviews and eliciting from folks what it is we think will make a good caregiver. Uh, we require an orientation, that you attend an orientation, and you're not an employee until you complete that orientation. Mm-hmm. We get to see what you're like. And if we don't like what we see, you don't get to go sit with a client. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and then we are very rigorous as we move along. Once, you know, if, if, if you pass that process and you become a comfort keeper, uh, you have to live up to those standards or we don't keep you. Um, our competition hires a lot of people that we fire. Uh, that's just the nature of the game. Uh, we, we're, so it, a, lot of, a lot of people think they want to be caregivers, a lot of people do try to become caregivers, but you have to be somebody really special to be a comfort keeper. Exactly. And um, I think one of the other challenges would be that you, these um, caregivers, they go to your clients' homes and you don't see mm-hmm. what exactly they are doing. So mm-hmm. how do you control the quality of the words that are, you are not seeing yourself? Mm-hmm. How we hold our comfort keepers or caregivers accountable um, is in, in many ways. W- one of the areas is just setting up that expectation from, from the start. Um, yeah, sometimes caregivers are in the home just by themselves. Uh, we have different software programs that we, that we use that allows family members to actually, um, once that shift is done, that they can actually go in and hear. They can hear sometimes and also see what the comfort keeper has um, done. You know, today, um, today we made corn muffins and mom uh, came up to the table and she filled up the corn muffins and we engaged her and she's having a great day. Today, mom had a really hard time getting into the to in, into the shower. Let's try again tomorrow. And you know, today, mom got into the shower, and this is what I did. Mm-hmm. So tomorrow, let's try that same you know technique and get her in the shower again tomorrow. So family members can <coughs> see in real time. Um, we're using technologies coming more and more into the into our homes. So your caregiver when they're in their mom's home, mm-hmm. they are writing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they can either sometimes use their smartphones or they call out. Um, we have Tanethni. They call out and and actually list um, what they did and if things were um, if they if tasks were completed for for that day. Mm-hmm. So you know, af- when we have first met with the family, we've come up with a plan of care. You know, and we list four or five um, activities that we want to make sure that are accomplished today. You know. Mom had her medication, mom had the shower, we went shopping, and we made sure that her linens were changed for that day. Yeah. Those are the four most important things that we um, want to have. I yeah. always put in there a good meal, because you know, eating is just awesome. Um, and so we would make sure that the comfort keeper addresses those five areas and at the end of the shift, and sometimes during the shift, um, they can report on these five things. So while mm-hmm. while your adult child is at um, work, they can either look on their smartphone and see, awesome, mom got a shower mm-hmm. in there today, so I don't have to do it tonight. Okay, mm-hmm. I can go back to so work. So your caregivers use their cell phones to enter those information. Yeah. Right, so in, we're only growing in that area as far as <coughs> this is just the tip. Uh, you know, this is just the tip of the using technology, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, how, how we provide care, but Comfort Keepers Corporate, we're we're in the forefront. We're 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 there. You know, we're getting there. And 
then we're a visionary. So we have mm -hmm. to look at what's the, what's the next what's the next thing that's going to come on. So the this board. is another aspect of having a franchise. Exactly. Having a franchise. Franchise. They are going huge. forward. Just <laughs> exactly. Huge, yeah. Yeah. This industry is a very dynamic. It's changing, and the pace of change is rapidly accelerating. And comfort keepers, that's one of the things that, yeah, you get back to what is the value of a franchise organization. They're out there day after day looking at what direction is this industry going in and how can we keep our franchisees at the forefront. And one of the things that Karen alluded to is this, this practice management platform that we have that where our caregivers, they clock into their shift. They're in someone's home, so how do we know they got there? They clock in on an electronic telephony system. You know, so they, they call in from the client's home or from an approved cell phone that we track, and if they don't clock in from the client's home or the, or the approved cell phone, they're not considered at work. If they don't clock out from the client's home phone or an approved cell phone, they're not clocked out. If it's not in our system, it didn't happen. But in order to clock out, they also have to go down a checklist of things that they were supposed to do that day. Um, and if it's not done, let us know why it wasn't done. For example, uh, client was supposed to have a shower. You know, well, you know, Mrs. Smith did not want to have a shower today because she really was enjoying, you know, we were, we were playing cards and she really didn't want to stop. Or she wanted to take a walk today. So instead of a shower, she insisted that we take a walk and not have a shower. So I, so it's right there and the family can come in in real time and see, this is what mom was doing today. This is what happened with mom today. Oh, mom got her shower. Mom didn't get her shower. Mom ate her meal. Mom didn't eat her. She, you know, they went out to lunch instead of ha eating at home. So it's when all they right are there. At, for example, working, they can see in real time that their mom is doing something. Exactly. Wow. Right. Yep. Right. It's awesome. Yep. Yeah. And this is a, this is all, you know, w this is all putting us at the forefront of this of this industry and this providing this type of service to the public. I don't. Uh, I can't imagine that someone, an independent person, can invest in using such a no, I don't know how you. Did. No, no. You, but again, that's that's what sets us apart. That's what makes us a premium service. That's what mm -hmm. makes our service worth what we what we charge. Mm -hmm. uh, we offer something more to a family that they're not going to be able to get just hiring someone off of uh, Craigslist uh, or off of an internet registry or off of uh, a, a small independent company that is out there and maybe providing good service. But there's just a lot of things they can't mm -hmm. they can't compete. I think that uh, for your services, none of the medical, Medicaid, uh, they're not usable. Uh, do they have to just pay by their money? Well, Medicare doesn't cover this type of service right now. There have been some proposals uh, that, that eventually it may. Uh, but uh, we are, are, yeah, people pay for our services out of their own resources, out of their life savings. Uh, they're all, our services are generally covered by long-term care insurance, and a lot of people do have that. They've been paying private for private so, insurance. Yeah, private insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there are several veterans programs that will mm -hmm. uh, pay for our services for uh, people who are qualifying veterans. Mm -hmm. um, but generally, people so are looking to. So it's another to, challenge in your business. I think that you really need to work in areas that higher income. Well, we, we have to work with families so that they get a level of care that they can afford uh, mm -hmm. if they want to use our, our service. Uh, we are mindful that people have to pay for the service, that people everyone has a budget. Uh, very few people have unlimited resources. Uh, um, so yeah, we, we work with people to help them figure out how they can get the best service that mm -hmm. they can afford. You have a territory in Arizona and one in Orange County. Yes. So how do you compare them? Well, ge demographically, they're very, very different. You know, Orange County, uh, my the demographic areas that I have in Orange and Fullerton, uh, we have a very uh, large senior population uh, and a very uh, high median income. Uh, Arizona, we have a very large uh, senior population, but a much lower median income. So, uh, developing uh, plans of care that are affordable in Arizona is much more difficult. Much more difficult mm -hmm. there uh, than it is here. Because the uh, lower income. Yeah, because people don't have the level of resources in general uh, mm -hmm. to pay for this type of service. How many employees you have in each of your territories? Uh, in California, we have about forty-five. Uh, caregivers uh, and in Arizona there are about 30 right now. 30. And um, you have 
65. I have about 65 mm -hmm. um, clients and comfort keepers as well. And my territory is a, is a condensed uh, area and it's very, um, it's very local as, as well. So that really, I think, makes a, makes a difference. And my comfort keepers, uh, the, the caregivers that we hire, some are working just small hours. Um, oh. uh, we really try to get them, you know, to work someplace near near their home. Mm -hmm. So we are the profile of our comfort keeper is usually a middle aged woman, a middle aged female woman, and she is uh, either dropping off her kids at school, working for comfort keepers a couple of hours, uh -huh. and then able to pick up her kids. And it just gives her a little bit of spending money, and she's mm -hmm. getting out of the house a little bit, and she's. And she has a purpose for that day, and she has a routine and schedule. So, that's are are they employees or independent? Companies? All of our uh, caregivers are employees, so they're supervised. Um, they're covered by workers' compensation insurance. Uh, mm -hmm. We they pay we pay into their um, unemployment, social oh, security. Nice. So they're definitely our employees. And you are full time in this business, so let us know a typical day that you have. <laughs> um, I am full time in, in my business as a general manager, so I have a great team um, here inside my office that are uh, organizing the day and moving forward, and I'm the, I'm the vision uh, behind that as, as, as well. So um, a typical day for a general manager might be meeting up in the morning with my staff here Either by uh, either by phone or um, or in the office, um, then I might be on a a meeting with my um, colleagues um, in the in the area with other owners. Um, I might um, I might be all hands on deck. Quick, someone has called off, and we've got everyone quickly looking for a looking for a caregiver and trying to get that shift um, you know filled within five five minutes it's kind of a zapper for the day right um, I might be doing payroll um, it's a it's a busy day as an owner there's a lot of responsibility behind it as being an owner and, and general uh, general manager mm -hmm. And then I might be also meeting with um, family members as well. They come in, they come in, stop in to the office and want to know, um, and updating their plan of care. Or um, might be um, we spent a lot of time here last fri on Friday. People picking up their their paychecks and spending the time to uh, talk to our comfort keepers and seeing how they're doing and as. Um, um, asking for time off, or you know, uh, letting them know how their clients are doing. Uh, we had a family members, uh, you know, stop in, and so a lot of it's all details. It's, it's all you go. To yeah, <laughs> some some details. I that was just a kind of a un unusual Friday, but we have a. Sometimes our staff is meeting up with uh, family members that are just stopping by because because we're local. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of our flavor, our flavor here. But a lot of times, um, as a general manager and owner, you're taking care of the uh, customer service. You're you're leading your team. You're making sure your comfort keepers are are being paid, and you're getting your bills out. So uh, um, your cash flow is coming in, and as well as um, planning and strategizing for um, different industry uh, needs as well. So Chris. Uh your story is a little bit different. It's a little bit different, but you know, basically very similar. Uh, I, I, in my offices, I uh, have someone who acts as a general manager. Uh, my primary role is in promoting the business. I do all of the accounting, but uh, my role is in promoting and guiding the business, uh, developing the long-term strategy. Uh, and I'm, I'm the one who's responsible for all the resources. If they need something, I'm the guy who's got to get them the tools they need to do their job from top to bottom uh, and have to make sure that uh, the bills get paid, uh, that everyone gets paid every week. Um, so uh, my role really falls more along those lines of, of long-term strategy, uh, marketing, uh, sales, and accounting. Awesome. And let's 
just summarize a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, who do you think fits this franchise as a good franchisee? What specifications, if a per you see in a person, you recommend them to buy a Comfort Keepers franchise? I would say a, a person who um, has compassion, a person who is has the ability to uh, be flexible and change, a person who's a, willing to take risk, um, a person who um, is a people person and mm -hmm. also um, part of a team and also someone who has a business background, um, has the ability to um, run a business um, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you said that you were born in this area and raised, so if someone comes from completely another area, how, how much does that uh, you know, have a role in your success? That you know the area, you know the people, you know. I want to know the established network that everyone who lives in a place has. How much role does it have in success in this business? I think for me personally, it's had, um, it has had some success, but I really feel that someone can, who's not from the area could do just as, just as well as long as they're, um, as long as they're, they're visible, they're committed, they, they are able to, they're able to communicate. Just where we are in California, it's multicultural, so we're crossing all sorts of um, cultural lines, so it's, you know, to be expected. But um, just being visible and being able to communicate and being um, able to be trusting to have, to have your business in your care. You know, I, I really believe anyone could be successful um, in, in doing that. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I think you know someone has to be willing to make the financial commitment first, and you also have to be willing to make the commitment of your time. Uh, at least initially, uh, people need to understand if you're going into a bus any business, whether it's franchise or not, uh, you have to give 100%, and 100% isn't 40 hours a week. 100% is every hour you have for some period of time. Your goal is to obviously not to have to do that forever, but to be successful, you really do have to devote yourself to your business, uh, whether and and that's true franchise or not. Uh, um, so you, you uh, and as far as whether it's important to be from the area or not, I don't think so. I think it's easy, uh, not easy, but I think it's uh, there. There is some advantage to somebody in having lived in a place, uh, and in some markets, that's uh, honest. My experience is, if we're talking to other owners, that's been a key to their success, but. In most markets, I don't think that's true. I think uh, if you're willing to come in and follow the steps that are laid out for you as, in terms of how to, to market and grow your business, uh, you can be successful. Um, there are, and that, that's part of what your franchise training is all about, is this is how you research a market, this is how you price yourself, this is how you position yourself. Uh, and I think, uh, I think somebody from any background could uh, probably be successful in the if they research the market re well they have the financial resources to survive because you need capital and they're willing to devote themselves and work really really hard uh, to get the thing up and running and to the point where it um, can operate a little more on its own awesome. for the last question I would like to ask if you had to do it again would you do the same thing by a franchise from comfort keepers or were there anything that you do differently? I don't think I would, you know, do anything. I don't think I would do anything differently. Maybe I, yes, I think I would have done something differently. I would have liked to have started faster. And uh, I think this being new to the franchise and the franchise being young, um, I don't think that was af afforded to me or having the, um, speaking with other maybe owners, but I would have liked to have started uh, faster and Comfort Keepers is there now. I, you know, if someone was to buy a franchise today, they would be up and running so much faster than I ever would have, you know, 11 years ago. So I would, I would say that would probably be my one thing I would like, <laughs> but I just like to move fast anyway. So um, I think that would be one of the 
um, things that I would have changed, but I've otherwise, still that, oh, absolutely, this. and I would not have been able to grow where, I've, where I'm growing now, and Comfort Keepers, yes, um, definitely. I looked at other options, other home care franchises to, to look at, and um, Comfort Keepers is, is still moving and growing and surpassing just um, what, um, what I was looking for, and being able to I can remember at one point in my franchise when they were developing these uh, performance manage management groups, I was, I was saying, um, this is exactly what I was looking for. I remember saying <laughs> that to a regional director. This is exactly what I was looking for, and this is what I was talking about to you, what I needed. You know, I'm on, I'm on board. I'm there. Let's go. So, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. What about you, Chris? Well, I think if you meet somebody who's started a business of any kind and they tell you they wouldn't do a lot of things differently <laughs> I'd like to meet them cuz uh, cuz you know cuz you're going to do things you're gonna, you know you, you do things and you learn uh, exactly. you're going to do some things wrong you're going to have some successes and failures along the way uh, so yeah I w uh, you know I, I would do a lot of things differently um, but uh, I'm very very happy being a comfort keepers franchisee uh, I think uh, I don't know of an organization out there that's as high a quality mm -hmm. in terms from top to bottom. Uh, and I talk to a lot of people who've been in franchises, franchises of all different kinds of businesses and have never encountered uh, the level of um, praise and satisfaction that I found among Comfort Keepers owners for, for CKFI. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a great organization. I'm happy, really, really happy to be a part of it. Thank you so much for your time thank and you. valuable information you shared with us. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah. Really appreciate it, Sarah. <laughs> sure. Have a great day. You too. <laughs> آخرین بخش از صحبت های من رو با فرانچایزی های کامفورت کیپرز مشاهده کردید. نکات زیادی است که دوستم راجبش صحبت کنم متاسفانه این دفعه وقتش نمیشه ولی حتما در قسمت آینده راجبش با اتون صحبت خواهم کرد. دوست دارم با یک جمله قشنگ که متاسفانه گویندش رو نمیدونم این قسمت رو به پایان ببرم. یه جایی خوندم که نوشته بود آیا این بخش از زندگیتون رو که درش قرار دارین دوست ندارین؟ خب دوباره از اول بنویسینش اونجوری که دوست دارین شما هستین که نویسنده یک کتاب زندگیتون می باشید روزها و شبهای خیلی خوبی رو براتون آرزو می کنید